Good morning. Today is Sunday. It is the 21st day of Tammuz. And we begin today the chapter 7 of Igera Satchuva. So, to make a short summary, in the previous chapters, the first six chapters of Igera Satchuva, the Rebbe talks about repentance. So, in chapter 1, 2, 3, the Alter Rebbe gave uh, directions of what is the basic teshuva. What is the basic repentance? Very simple. All you have to do is you have to have a change of heart and you say, Hashem, I'm here. I regret what I did. I want to do exactly what you want for me. And that is teshuva. Immediately you're forgiven. Then there is also the extra step after you're forgiven and clean. There's the extra step which comes that after you're forgiven, you still want to be beloved just like before the sin. And that was either to fasting when in the days that we were able to do so. And there was a lot of fast that ne- needed for each particular sin. Or ex- the exchange in tzedakah, that we give a lot of tzedakah today because of that. So, and then in chapter four, the Alter Rebbe began to explain the sod, that there is the secret of teshuva, which is according to Kabbalah, the teshuva has a whole different and deeper meaning. And this is what it says, teshuva is tashuv hay, that there is the hay that we need to return. What is the hay? The hay of the name Avaya, Yud Kevavke, the name of a God. And he explains how in every Jew, in every Neshama, there is invested, God invested the innermost power of his essence in every single Jew. And by doing, committing a sin, we drag down this hay, which is the root of the Neshama, the source of the Neshama, we drag it down to the lowest places. And teshuva, real teshuva, means to bring it up back to, to Hashem, back to the name connected, reconnected to its source where it belongs. So this is what we learned in the first six chapters. So now that we know this, the question is when it comes to practical, what do we need to do? So in the beginning of the Yigera Satchavi, he told us what we need to do, all we need to do is to take upon ourselves to be good, to do, to be together with Hashem. And that's, that's, that's the, the change of heart that we have. This is the whole idea of Teshuvah. So what is it, what we learned, all of this deeper things, the, the hay, and what is this, how is this um, affect our Teshuvah? This is what it begins to say now in chapter seven. Chapter seven, al Rebbe begins to explain that the, being that we know that the, there is the deeper, the more we understand the deeper effect, what happens through a person disobeying Hashem and go, doing, go, doing something which is not what Hashem wants. So when we think about it, then our teshuva becomes a much deeper teshuva. And he begins to explain, let's share, we're going to read inside what the Alter Rebbe says in chapter 7. ואולם, סדלת רבי דרך האמס והיושר לבחינס תשובת התו, היית תו הנעל, הם בייז דברים דרך כלל. However, the true and direct path to the lower level of תשובה, returning the letter ה, hey, as noted above, involves two general elements. So, um, as we mentioned earlier in the previous lessons, that there is two Hays in the name of Avaya, in the name of God. And the lower Hay is, there is, uh, there is two ways of Teshuva, two ways of Teshuva, repentance, which correspond to the two Hays. The lower Hay of the name of Hashem represents a lower level of Teshuva that we need to return. And there is the higher hey, this is going to explain later 
in the Igeras HaTshuva. Now he's focusing on the lower level of the Shuva. So he says that there is a true and direct path. A true and direct path. What does it mean, a true and direct path? What is a true path? A true path means, I mean, after all, we, we already said, what is Teshuvah? Just to you have a change of heart and say, Hashem, I want to be good. But this is, this is nice. This is good. However, it may not be true. What does it mean, not true? It's not that you don't mean it sincerely. You can mean it sincerely. But truth, emes, it says emes is something, truth is something that lasts. Something that lasts is considered truth. And something that, that is, doesn't last is not really truth. Meaning that when you have a, a, um, an, a, an excitement, you heard an, a lesson, you went to a lecture and you heard the excited, you want to do tshuva, you want to do the right thing, and you get and you start and you change of heart and you do the right thing. However, it can fade away. After a day, after a month, sometimes after 15 minutes, you get excited and then, ah, oh, let me go do again what I need to do. So if you want something to last, then there is a different, path, a different path of doing teshuva in a deeper way. And this is what Dalta Rebbe is going to explain, what is a deeper way. And he says, this is also a this is also the straight way. What does it mean, the straight way? Sometimes people get to do teshuva through other side things. Here is a straight way that tells us what is the, ray, the straight way and the true way. And it says there are two elements, two general elements. What are the two general elements? It says, The first is to awaken supreme compassion from the source of mercy for one's divine spirit and soul. Meaning that you have to awaken the compassion from Hashem, Emoker Rachmim, and the Neshama, and your godly soul is a big Rachman, it's a big pity. Literally, that it's very, very Rachman, it's a big pity on this soul that it came from such a high place and it fell to such a low, low place. That has fallen from a lofty height. Literally, Igra Rama means a rooftop from a high roof, the infinite source of life. Where did it fall? Lebira Amikta. It fell into a deep pit. Not merely from a rooftop, but from a lofty rooftop. Not merely into a pit, but into a deep pit. What is it? Namely, the chambers of the defilement and Sitra Acha. Sitra Acha means the other side, the evil inclination, the evil places. So you have to, when you, when you have, when you think about this hole in a Shama, that went down from such a high place and fell down into such a low level, because the places where it goes is uh, against the will of Hashem, is dragging down, as the Alter Rebbe says in, 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 the, in a different uh, uh, place, it says when it's like you're taking the king and you're putting him into the toilet. Literally. He says, Val Mekairo. so this is you have to think about pity on the Neshama. Also, you have to think about pity Val Mekairo b'mokar achayim u'shem avaye baruchu. One should arouse divine compassion as well for the source of the soul. In the source of life, the four letters of name of name of God, the four letter name of God, Shema Vaya. Since the soul is rooted in the tetragrammaton, which is the four letter name of Hashem, it's degrade, the degradation brought about by sin correspondingly causes the flow of holiness that animates from the tetragrammaton to descend into the chambers of the clippers and sitra acha. Hence, 
not only the soul, but its source too is to be pitied. The source, the essence, Hashem himself, so to speak, is also to be pitied that this, this is also being dragged down. When you, when you, where, being that a Jew is connected with that same, the holy source, so wherever you go, you drag down the name of Hashem with you. As the verse states, he shall return to God and he will have compassion for him. Now, what does it mean he'll have compassion for him? You'll return to God and you'll have compassion for him. Who is for him? You can say for him is for the neshama. But for him also can mean you have compassion on Hashem himself and God himself, so to speak. As the verse states, he shall return to God and have compassion for him, meaning the sinner shall return to God and have compassion for him. But how are we to understand the concept of arousing mercy for the tetragrammaton and arousing mercy for the name of Havaya? So he says, Pirush, la'oyre rachamim alashpoas sheim Havaya baruchu. This means arousing compassion for the life-giving power issuing from the four-letter name that has descended by stages into the chambers of the impure sitra acher to give them vitality. How? This descent was brought about by the deed of man and his evil sh- schemes and thoughts. Evil thoughts alone suffice to make the vitality descend into the chambers of the clippers and sitra acher. Some people say, uh, I'm, not, I'm a good person. I, I'm not doing anything bad. I'm just thinking, just looking, just thinking, my mind about this and that, but I didn't do anything bad. So it says, no, the thoughts is something that also has the power to drag down the king. Because as it says, he says, Kemosha Kosov, as the verse says, Melech Asu Berhatim Bereitein Mocha. There's a king that is tied the Berhatim. It says, the verse states, the king is bound with gutters, which is interpreted to mean that a king is bound with the gutters of the mind. What does it mean by the gutters? Here, we're talking about rahatim, it's the place where the, where the water flows. What, what, what in the person it constantly flows, is constantly for, uh, functioning, constantly doing, is the mind. Everything else doesn't necessarily constantly work. You don't always speak, you don't always do, but the mind never stops working. And this is what it's called in the goddess of Rehatim, the where the water constantly flows, it refers to the, the flowing of the thoughts. That whatever you think, whatever you think, whatever you whatever you go with your thoughts, that you drag down with you, you drag down with you the name Hashem himself, the, the energy of Hashem that makes you, that gives you vitality. And this is as Ibchinas Golus Ashchina Kanal. And this, and this state as noted above is the exile of the Shechina. The divine presence, the level of Malchus, kingship of the world of Atzilut. And this is what he said, this is what we need to bring, uh, have pity on this. Of, uh, and the godliness that we drag down. The auspicious time for this arousal of compassion is Tikkun Chatzas, the midnight lament for the exile of the divine presence. What is Tikkun Chatzas? This is uh, something that back in the days, today it's not so, uh, it's not so common, we don't do it much. Tikkun Chatzas, in the, back in the days, there were people who were in the midnight, especially in the midnight is a very auspicious time to cry for the Golus Ashkina, the exile of the, of the Divine Presence. And people would get up in the, at midnight 
and they would uh, they would cry, say special prayers, but they didn't go back to sleep. After this, they would go to study Torah all day, uh, all night until the morning. They would daven shachris and all. So this was I think in Chatzos, This is the time he says when uh, when we uh, when we can really have pity on the neshama. What do we do today that we don't have Tikkun Chatzas? We most of us don't do Tikkun Chatzas. I do remember this. I, I saw back when I, in Yerushalayim, I went to the Kotel Maravi, the Western Wall. I was sometimes went late uh, at night, and after midnight, I saw people sitting there. People very unique people sit and do Tikkun Chatzas. It's very unique people. So, but in general, this is something that we don't. Uh, do today. So what, what can we do today? So today, says the Alter Rebbe, uh, the Rebbe says uh, we can do either do, during the davening when you pray, you can have a special time, or especially also when you do the Kriya Shema, when you say the Shema before you go to sleep, you think about the day that has passed, you're thinking about the positive you think about the day, the positive, the, the, what you did in that day, and then you um, you think about how to prepare for the next day, and then you go to sleep. But but you go to sleep uh, like a, like a mensch. I said in the morning it says in Shukhanach, it says you have to wake up like a lion. So there was Hasidim used to say if you go to sleep like a dog, you cannot wake up like a lion. When you wake up like a lion, you have to go to sleep like a mensch. So it says that's what when uh, so that's when we have to think about what uh, what uh, we did with our actions. As pointed out in a note in the Tikkun Chatzos in the Siddur, see there at length. It says We just find in the prayer. This comes from the lamentations from Eicha. The crown of our head is fallen. Vote to us, for we have sinned. Meaning, the sin caused the soul's source, the crown of our head, to topple into the depth of the klipas and sitreacha. The crown of the head represents the highest level of Hashem of godliness, and that has fallen through our deeds. Therefore, the Holy One, blessed be, is called humiliated king in Pirkei Echalot. What is Pirkei Echalot? This is, this is a small book that written by the great uh, Tanaim, the sages, Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yishmael Kongodo. And there, he, they, he, they describe the, the greatness of Hashem. The one chapter, they said over there, Hashem is called a king. And all kinds of titles, he says, this king, Melech Gadol, Melech Norad, all the, then it says also Melech Aluv. Melech Aluv. What does it mean, Melech Aluv? A humiliated king. So Rabbi Moshe Kodavir explains that Melech Aluv means the king is humiliated. When a person, because the king is dragged with us, with, with the person. Wherever the person goes, wherever a Jew goes, the king drags the king with him. And therefore, if, a, if, a, if, a, if it goes in the wrong places, it is a humiliation for the king. For there is no humiliation deeper than this, that the ignominy, ignominy of exile within the realms of Kalipas. Ubifrat, especially Kasher is born in a maskil big dula sin sobo, whom a malakalam never say of Kalami. Especially when a thoughtful person meditates on the greatness of the Infinite One, who permeates all worlds and com- encompasses all worlds. Meaning, when, when you think about Hashem, a humiliated Hashem. What is Hashem? the more, the deeper you understand what is the greatness of God, the deeper the understanding of the feeling, what effect you did. I mean, you, let's, let's say you, you, a person walks by in the street and uh, you, did, you said something not nice to him. And, okay, and then you feel bad. Oi, I said something nice to a person, which is you know, nice to so feel bad. You say, I'm sorry. 
But what if somebody comes over and tells, tells you, you know who that person was that you just humiliated? This was the great, the chief rabbi. What? Chief rabbi? How could I humiliate this place? You feel much worse. Then, he had the, then the regret is a much deeper one. And the same thing is when you're talking about Hashem. The more we appreciate, the more we study about the greatness of Hashem. That's why we have the Hasidus that describe him the greatness of Hashem. And the more we study it, the more we go deeply, we have a deeper appreciation of what we really do with our actions. Each person, each person meditating upon God's greatness according to the range of his intellect and understanding. He will be extremely grieved over this. This is the first thing. So the first thing of getting to this teshuva, tata'a, is to think about uh, uh, what a person does to by go, uh, dragging down the greatness, the holiness of Hashem himself, the king himself, into the lowest places. Then he says there is a second method, uh, a second element to this teshuva, v'abeiz levateish u'lachnia haklipa v'asitreach. The second element in one's preparation for a true and direct path to repentance is to crush and subdue the klipa and sitra achra, the evil, the other side, to crush it down, the arrogance, all of the, we know that the klipa, the things which is the opposition of Hashem, does not have a real existence. The whole existence of it is, is something which is air, it's empty. It is arrogance, empty arrogance. And when a person thinks about this, how the whole opposition, the whole Yetzirah and the evil are so nothing, and you crush these things, it says, whose entire being is simply grossness and arrogance. As the verse states, if you exalt yourself like an eagle, I bring you down. The crushing and subjugation and absolute, absolutely to dust is its death and nullification. How do you crush it? So he says, Evil is crushed through a broken and contrite heart, a sense of personal unworthiness, repugnance, and so forth. As explained in part one, chapter 29, the animal soul, even of a Bainani, Bainani is a person who is in full control, how, even of a Bainani, how much more so of a sinner, is the very person himself, who is the person? The animal soul. God created her that, created a, uh, us that way. When his heart is humbled, his animal soul, which derives from Kalipa, is of course humbled as well. Thus, crushing and subduing one's arrogance crushes the Kalipa and Sitra Acha. This is described in the Zoya and the verse offering to God, offerings to God, Elohim, are the broken spirit. Meaning, the offering consists of a, the breaking the spirit of the Kalipis and Sitre Acha, the evil side. And this is achieved through a heart broken and contrite. And he explains, For all animal offerings are dedicated to the Shema Vaya, the Tetragrammaton, the attribute of mercy. This is why all verses which speak of offerings to God refer to Him the, with the Tetragrammaton. 
אבל לא שם מליקים, אם מידי סדים, אין מקריבים מאי קורבן בהימו. ותו אלוקים הרבה, the name indicating the attribute of justice, no animal offerings is brought. כי אם, instead, meaning what is considered an offering to אלוקים, for the verse, for the verse does after all state the offering to אלוקים. So the offering to אלוקים, he says, is לשבר ולהעביר רוח הטומה וסטרה אחה וזוהי רוח נשברה. The offering is the shattering and removing the, the spirit of uh, defilement and sitra acha. This is the meaning of a broken spirit. How is the spirit of the sitra acha broken? When the heart is broken and contrite. And it's going to explain it tomorrow how to do it. But in the olden days, Used to say that they used to say that yeah uh, they used to have in order to do so you have to have um, uh, to have a break by fasting a lot and doing all kinds of things, but this was it was only in the olden days. Today, as we mentioned before, we don't do it through fasting. On the contrary, it is important to have constantly be simcha to be joyous. But in certain times, we have ways of breaking the sitra ach and how. by giving up certain things that you want to do. If you have a desire to do something, you have a desire to eat, you have a desire to, to do something else, you're giving up your, your lusts and you break yourself and in, in, in you have a desire to speak bad about some. Those are things that we are able to break. But, but from time to time, when you, especially when you go to sleep, you say Shema at night, then you think, about how the day was. But immediately this has to, it cannot be in a way that it should bring you down because the whole idea is to lift us up. So we have to, forget, not to forget that the whole idea is we have to be besimcha, to serve Hashem besimcha, to have, to have the understanding that Hashem gave us the opportunity to learn the Tanya. He gave us the opportunity to appreciate what we are accomplishing through our deeds. Something that we didn't know in the years before. Because the, this Hasidus is revealed to us more than in the previous generation. So we have this opportunity to do it. And so we feel the bad about how we drag down the Shekhinah in the name of Hashem. But at the same time, we feel much greater, much better the fact that we have such a great schus to elevate, to bring back the hay. To bring back, back the hay of the name of Hashem that is lowered so low and we're able to elevate it, to elevate us Uh, to back to the source and to, and this will this is the shashuva the shuva bring lifts us up to the highest places so this is the end of today's shear and um, please share please subscribe on the YouTube and share with others and join us tomorrow morning nine o'clock anybody has any questions you can ask the questions now